Hey guys! So today we have something, well, it's a bit of a break from some sock videos. We have a thread kind of compilation. Yeah, thread compilation. Not simulator, I'm not a robot. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, you can't say that anymore. <laughs> um, but some of the stories are really good and me and Nick were like, absolutely wetting ourselves through some of the yeah, stories. So, I yeah. enjoyed them. I thought they were actually particularly good, this one. So here, but I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's just get into this, will we? D&D players, what is the most creative character you've seen someone play as? There was a campaign where the party came across a magical cauldron filled with boiling gold. They were told they could drop an item in and it would be turned to gold while retaining all of its other properties and be imbued with intelligence. They were warned the intelligence might be malevolent. While the party debated what to drop in, the gnome rogue jumps in. He became gold-coated, which increased his armour class significantly, but also became cursed with an evil alter ego. There was much rolling to determine when and for how long he was forced to play as chaotic evil. A thief with level 1 illusionist that passed himself off as an arch wizard throwing fireballs and screaming, these beasts are immune to magic, in a fight, it was a funny experience. He was good at scamming NPCs though. One of my players was playing as an earth elemental cleric. They were sailing to some faraway island when everybody was dicking around, and they knocked said cleric into the ocean. Of course he didn't float and sank straight to the bottom. Couldn't drown either, technically. It took the players three sessions of underwater themed adventures to finally get him rescued. Because he had spent so much time under immense pressure on the ocean floor, he came out as a lava elemental. And now he can't set foot in wooden buildings, and nobody can touch him without taking burn damage. If the players wind up in a particularly cold environment, they just crowd around him for warmth now. Which means they don't need to build campfires anymore. Unfortunately, he is incredibly bright at night and has a minus seven stealth modifier. A necromancer who thought they were a cleric. Only the player and the DM knew and had a list translating what the player said they were doing and what they were actually doing, i.e. spells, dilly prep, so that others wouldn't catch on out of character. In his formative years, he came upon a book of forbidden spells. Being young and stupid, he assumed it was a book of divine rituals. Fast forward several years and he wanders the land preaching about the everlasting life. He's skilled in first aid and potions because not every scrape requires divine intervention but has some spells that will bring someone back from the brink of death. He also has a bodyguard who wears full plate who follows him around because he owes a life debt. Doesn't talk much though. The other players never discussed removing their own armour or eating or using the toilet so nobody found it odd that the NPC never did. The other players also never took points in Knowledge Arcane to discover the spell effects didn't match what they should. Edit. People are asking. He got found out when one of the party members went down and he turned them into a zombie. The players were then in on the joke and weren't able to separate what they knew and what their characters knew, which is why they weren't told from the start. If the party member hadn't gone down, there was a plan to have a personal quest in a Trial of Faith style to see if he could unintentionally turn himself into a lich. And if the party would help him do so. See, I always like characters like that. You know, where you kind of like hide. Like there's a backstory that yeah. nobody really knows. Or you, there's like a underlying. Yeah. Yeah, like, I like that I, I as like well. That, but you have to keep it actually private from the rest of the group. Yeah. You can't actually have other people know. Only the DM can know. Yeah. Otherwise it spoils it. Almost. Yeah. But yeah. I really love that concept. Though. Yeah. I'm really into that shit. I once played a halfling thief. He thought he was a wizard. He actually had some kind of abnormality that 110% blocked him from doing magic of any kind. The difference between mine and yours is the rest of the party knew he wasn't a wizard. But humoured him anyway, to the point of talking him up doing something mundane as some lofty, overpowered, awe-inspiring act of spell work, which he believed more than any of the NPCs that witnessed it. It culminated with him actually managing to cast an overpowered, world-altering spell once, when his abnormality was temporarily healed, and all the magic energy he had unknowingly stored his whole life all came rushing out of him at once, only since it didn't feel the same as all the other spells he had been casting. He didn't think it came from him, and gave some mundane coincidence reasoning for it happening. A lizard wizard, not a cool humanoid one, 
a gecko which could occasionally spat sparks. It's been a long time, but as I remember it, my buddy was using Middle Earth as the setting. My character was an elf with polymorph abilities, hung out in Mirkwood, and while transformed as various woodland creatures, spied on passersby on behalf of Gladriel. Spending 100 plus years in Mirkwood changed her into something a bit more empty. Not physically, just personality. Lazy. Likes to talk about trees. At this point, I wasn't tainted with min-maxing or metagaming, so I was more than content to make this weird awesome elven forest woman with no social or combat skills, and send her into an adventure based on subterfuge. Navigating deserts and combat. I was also interested in making an elven woman who wasn't a token archetype. Awkward, homely, blunt, super into trees, and tree stuff, and not the usual elven. Let's make dope skyscrapers out of these redwoods. Wow. But let me tell you which tree sap tastes best right off the bark. So she ended up whisked away, reassigned to an adventure in the east, past Mordor, into the desert where, according to the DM, tokens mentioned in only one paragraph, blue wizards were hiding. She was very upset with her reassignment. Over the course of the adventure, because wizards, she got stuck as a part Rode on another character's shoulders, preferred disguises, lots of scouting, lots of complaining about not being in Mirkwood, and also being a pirate. Many Mirkwood facts, Mirkwood reminisces, drawing maps of Mirkwood in the sand with a talon. The entire time I had her advertising the party that returning to Mirkwood would be the best option. That said, when the enemy least expected it, BAM! Sleep mist and trash talk punctuated with BOX! <laughs> Surprisingly effective. We never finished the campaign, so I'd like to imagine she just abandoned them at some point, and there's a colourful parrot flying happily around Mirkwood, perching on Treebeard's shoulder occasionally, a character who's actually from Mirkwood, not Treebeard, who I've been reminded is from Fangorn. Yes, he is from Fangorn. Yeah. See? All I know is Mirkwood. Squawk! Nothing else. <laughs> it was fun to think about this again after all this time. Now I'm probably going to remake her as an important NPC in my new wilderness adventure based campaign. Simon and Garfunkel. It was just for a one shot so I don't remember all the details. I believe Simon was a gnome wizard and Garfunkel was a goliath fighter or some other large race. Simon was a murderous psychopath that Garfunkel had accidentally paralysed at some point in the past, to the point where Simon can't even speak. So he carries Simon around like a baby out of guilt, caring for him and protecting him. Simon's entire existence is seething with rage, usually trying to kill Garfunkel and those around him, but always failing, with Garfunkel being completely unaware of Simon's burning hate for him. He was a stealth character, but all his stat points went into intimidation. So whenever he was spotted, he would just shout, You do not see Grog! And casually sneak past. <laughs> you don't see me! <laughs> Is this some I can't see you! I, you can't see I, I, I feel some John Cena references. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see me! <laughs> it's meant to be Pepper do, 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 do. do, 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 do. <laughs> I had a buddy who rolled a dwarf thief. It quickly became apparent that he was terrible at all things thieving. He failed several very easy stealth, pickpocket and fast talk rolls. When we asked him what the hell was up, he explained that he took a whole bunch of flaws so that he could start off with a skeleton key. Oh, cool, we thought to ourselves. At least locks won't be a problem. We reach a locked door. We ask him to pull out a skeleton key. He obliges. Reaching into his pack and removing an adamantium hammer that has skeleton key engraved on the hilt, which he then uses to pulverize the door with his plus four strength. <laughs> well, you know. well, if it works. That's not bad, actually. Good times. Yeah, yeah. My current campaign is made entirely from characters who are new to D&D, myself included. So when building characters, my friend rolled mostly average stats, with the exception of intelligence. So he has a minus three in that, so we basically determined that he's illiterate. 
During our campaign, he also referred to the DM as God as a joke. And he kept asking questions like, Alright God, what do we do about blank? So I made a joke that it looks like his character is actually communicating with a god on a regular basis. But everybody around him just thinks he's insane and will never believe him. He then got the personality trait, Divine Guidance, which allows him to have a helpful hint once per campaign session. So canonically, his character can communicate with God, but to everyone else he's just talking to himself as a result of his intellectual ineptitude. Personally, the most creative I've seen was a tiefling warlock who was constantly disguising himself as an elf cleric. All of the players, out of character, knew what he was, but he had the whole party in character convinced. And between his high charisma and the rest of the party's low intelligences, it didn't seem likely to change anytime soon. I've got a friend who is a weird character machine. Most recently is an orc named Strog who believes that weapons are a card's weapon, and beats people to death with his shield. Oh, is this a death from fucking work camp? <laughs> Before that was Robert the Destroyer, a barbarian who threw ladders <laughs> at people. Okay, okay, is that like, what? Well, we come up with Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan! Jackie Chan holding the baby in a ladder factory. <laughs> Stop it. There was three dollars and fifty cents. Are three fitty to his friends? <laughs> A really creepy monk. He could shit vines out of his hands like Spider Man. Why is he called three fitty then? There was wait what? There was three dollars and fifty cents. Or three oh like fifty cents. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And of course, Justin Chandler, a shaman who saved literally all his gold to level 7, then used it to permanently enlarge and awaken his pet frog and deck it out with sweet gear. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's what I'm talking about. Alex Jones and <laughs> Vilken Gamesh. A 5th edition warlock who halfway through a random goblin encounter realised he was killing them for no reason and became a staunch defender of goblin rights. Oh, disgusting. <laughs> Harold the Great and Powerful was a bard who was absolutely useless but invested everything in bluff and insisted he was a high level wizard. Also had a penchant for buying people's souls and then pushing them towards positions of power. The Bear Witch Project, <laughs> aka B Whip or Bruce Burner, <laughs> was a lycanthrope witch that spent most of his time in half bear form. When asked what his gut feelings were on a topic, he responded with, "I have, I have many feelings on guts." Okay. Did a min-max build to create a damaged monster off a fighter. Had to shortchange him in certain areas as far as wisdom and intelligence goes. Ooh. Goals. Goals. Fuck it, keep going. Keep not in. I realised this was a bad idea the third or fourth time I died during a single session because Brick had trouble realising what was dangerous and what was not. Eventually, the cleric just tied a rope around his neck and led him around. That seemed to help a lot. <laughs> a few years ago on Reddit, I made the claim that D&D 3.5 gave you the ability to play literally anything you wanted, including a sentient goddamn wheelbarrow. I ended up starting up a race of intelligent wheelbarrows. This bit me in the ass when someone decided to play one in one of my games, but I had to put my money where my stupid mouth was and let them. Well, work got busy, but I did get some preliminary work done. As it turns out, using the intelligence object template complicates things by adding statistic value to certain abilities. To compensate for this, I adjusted to the following. Cart, large vehicle, strength plus six, dexterity plus zero, Constitution plus 6, Intelligence plus 0, Charisma plus 0, Speed, Poor slash Slow, Hit Dice, 5d6, 
Armor class plus floor. 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 <laughs> Fuck, you keep going. <laughs> Lolly. Fuck it, I'm not cut at this point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Assuming no character class, your starting skill points are 2 plus intelligence modifier multiply B8. You have one natural attack. Ram <laughs> 2d6. <laughs> <Natural attack. laughs> From intelligent item modifier, you gain the ability to speak and read any language you know. You also have 60 foot dark vision and hearing, and 10 ranks in knowledge, local. Hold person, 3 a day, just fall over them. Locate object, 3 a day. So I suppose the only way to like end this video is to talk about the character that I'm personally playing at the minute. He's called Baza. Baza! Uh, oh I Baza. Baza! Big Baza! North FC! Now I'm sure a lot of you guys probably know the North FC meme, don't you? If not, to give you a basic gun down, it's... You know, have you ever been in Wetherspoons and, you know... Or a typical English pub. English pub. And, and there's always one... Big fat fella, big, big fat, fat middle-aged man. With a pint of beer, shit whatever it is. Eel. Shit eel. Yeah. And he's sitting shouting at the screen over the football match. Going, oh, oh. no, FFZ! No, FFZ! Well, that's pretty much... That's Baza. Yeah, that's pretty much Baza. I like to use, you know, like, stereotypes that everyone knows of. Like, yeah. you know, like, basic generic stereotypes. And then try and put them into, like, a fantasy universe. Yeah. I think it's actually a really cool way yeah. of creating characters and I really like doing it. Um, if you guys have got any characters that you have done, definitely post them down below. Maybe if we get enough of them, maybe who knows, we might be able to do a video yeah. compilation of what your guys' characters are. Yeah. I think it will be pretty cool. And by the way, guys, thank you so, so much for subscribing. We've hit 90,000. Hey. 10,000 away from 100,000. We might be able to get that plaque and put it on pride and place on our house wall. Yeah, it'll be pretty cool. For everyone to see. Um, but don't forget, if you like a video or if you know any friends who would like a video, send them. Like, share share the videos or even like your D&D group, show it to them. Yeah, you never you know, know. Sharing is caring. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Anyway, cheers. Thank you. Thanks, guys, a lot for subscribing and all that other good stuff. And look, we'll see you in the next video. Hope you guys have enjoyed. Bye. Suck. Hold on.